Hello and welcome to module 8 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, this is a follow up from the previous module where we introduced the kinetic theory of collisions. So, again our aim is to calculate the rate constant and from an atomistic picture. So, that for any general reaction I will be able to calculate a number out. Uh, in the last module we had introduced the basic idea as essentially uh, the rate is equal to the uh, rate of collisions between hard spheres. So, we do not think of any bonds for now, we think of these uh, reaction as between uh, two spheres just colliding with each other and we calculate the rate of these collisions. Uh, we ended up uh, in the last module of uh, uh, rate as a function of u and uh, so today we are going to answer the question how do we calculate this u. And in doing so we will introduce also the notion of a, a transformation to center of mass. Uh, so, again the resources uh, for this module of or for this entire kinetic theory of collisions is chapter 4 of the Laidler's book or you can also uh, look at uh, this uh, link ok. There also you can see a, a sufficiently good description. Uh, Okay. So, just a quick recap, uh, how did we estimated this uh, rate? The rate is the rate of collisions. The rate of collisions is nothing else but by definition uh, the number of collisions occurring between A and B per unit time per unit volume. Okay. Uh, this way that I have defined here. And so, this I rewrote as the number of A per unit volume into the number of collisions that A has with B per unit time. Now, uh, number of A per unit volume is simply the density of A which is N A and the number of collisions per unit time we basically estimated as the collision region into density of B. And the collision region uh, last module we went into great details and showed that it is simply this volume of this cylinder that is here. Uh, where this uh, distance d is nothing but uh, r a plus r b. Okay, so, we calculate the volume of this cylinder and multiply by the density of b that is uh, uh, what we derived the last module. So, we put this number of collisions per unit time and the density here in this equation above to calculate the overall rate. Uh, and that is where we ended in the last module. And so, one very natural question that arises is uh, what is this u? Not only this u, another assumption we had made while doing this volume calculation is we assume b to be stationary. Uh, what if b is not stationary? That, that of course, is a very ad hoc assumption. b is also moving right. We are at some constant temperature t and at constant temperature both a and b will be moving. So, how do we account for that? Uh, so, let us start with uh, B being not stationary. So, uh, let us imagine I have uh, A moving with some velocity u A and B moving with some velocity u B, both are vectors. So, what do I do now? Uh, actually, the answer is quite simple we simply change our inertial frame and go to a frame where B is stationary. Uh, uh, we simply change our frame to uh, we, uh, we basically sit on B. So, we have subtracted U B from every single particle. So, this now becomes some U A minus U B and B becomes stationary. Yeah. So, this uh, u is now this speed essentially. Okay. So, how do we uh, basically calculate this u? So, we will start with a very simple approximation. Uh, what we do is to assume this u to be the average thermal speed of this relative velocity u a minus u b. Okay. So, that of course, is an approximation. Uh, and uh, today we are going to work towards this, but in the next module we are going to improve upon that as well. 
But let us start with this, it is at least a reasonable assumption to start with. We assume all particles are moving with this average speed and anyway this whole uh, kinetic theory of pollutions is a very uh, rough estimate. Okay, so, it is a ballpark order of calculate uh, estimate that we are doing anyway. So, that is why we go ahead with this uh, average thermal speed. But how do we even calculate this average thermal speed? Uh, so, to calculate this average thermal speed we will have to do some transformations and we go to what is called the center of mass. So, what is the center of mass? Uh, so, imagine I have this particle A, uh, this is vector R A and I have B. and they have their corresponding speeds and momentum. Uh, what we do is we define new variables u center of mass and u relative to be this. Okay. Uh, now, uh, basically we can also define the corresponding, uh, let us just define these total masses as well. So, I define capital M to be Ma plus Mb. And we will need one more quantity that will soon enough uh, you will see the reason for defining this. This is called the reduced mass. So, effectively we define P C O M as M U C O M and uh, P relative as mu U R. Okay. So, this uh, if you have not seen this transformation before it might seem a little bit abstract, but just bear with me uh, soon enough this will uh, simplify to something very beautiful. And if you have seen this before this uh, will come uh, for example, in if you have studied quantum mechanics of hydrogen atom or even if you study a planetary system the center of mass is useful. It is center of this transformation comes in many many contexts. Uh, the point is uh, what I will can show is that the Hamiltonian equal to uh, 1 over 2 m a p a dot p a plus 1 over 2 m b p b dot p b. Okay, so, I have my masses m a and m b here. So, this is my net Hamiltonian. Remember in kinetic theory of collisions we do not have any potential my Hamiltonian is simply the kinetic energy. That is a very important thing that you must always remember in kinetic theory of collisions, no potential, no bonding. Okay. So, this one can show is equal to 1 over 2 m p c o m dot with p c o m plus 1 over 2 mu uh, P r dot with P r. So, if you want you can go ahead and prove this for yourself. Uh, as additional slide I have shown the proof here. Okay. So, uh, you have to be just very careful it is not a hard proof at all. So, you go by the definitions that was defined in the previous slide that I have uh, re-mentioned uh, here. And uh, you, you can let us start with this Hamiltonian. This is easier to start with rather than with P a square over 2 m a plus P b square over 2 m b. I substitute P c o m and P uh, r here. Uh, once you simplify you will see that some terms are going to cancel, you keep on simplifying and eventually you will get end up with this. 
So, uh, this proof is not part of this uh, syllabus, but uh, it is also not a hard proof to do. You should be able to do this proof actually. Uh, another point which is actually going to become important is that the volume element also remains the same. So, you can also show that dPa into dPb equal to dPr into dPcom. Okay. Again the proof is not part of the syllabus, but I have provided you this proof as an additional slide for those who are interested. Uh, and the proof is actually very simple. Uh, how do you transform? You essentially find the Jacobian of the derivative matrix, some technical language. If you do not know, then you can look it up. And uh, once you know this language, then it is very easy. All you do is to find the derivative of uh, uh, these variables with respect to PA and PB you get uh, this m a over m b, m b over m and the corresponding uh, uh, coefficients here. You find this determinant and take the magnitude of this determinant. Okay? So, these things are easy to prove although uh, we will not uh, uh, take this officially as a part of this, this syllabus. Okay. So, what am I doing with all of this? This all mathematics is of course good, but what is the point? Uh, what is the point is that we are trying to find the average speed. So, let us define this u more formally as this is nothing but the average of this p r by mu. Okay, so, that is how we are going to estimate u. It is this relative momentum p r again is uh, my bad u r again is uh, u a minus u b and p r is nothing but mu u r. So, p r over mu is your relative speed uh, and so th this is what we are trying to find and we are trying to find the magnitude. We do not care about the vector a and this relative direction might be moving in any direction across space. I do not care if it is moving up or if it is moving this direction or uh, towards you. Yeah, I, all I care is what is the overall value. So, how do we calculate this? Well, we use our general strategy of how do we find averages which is equal to 1 over mu. Uh, uh, we calculate essentially dq, dp, rho equilibrium of q comma p that we looked a few modules ago that is also shown here into the quantity that I want to average. Yeah. So, I go ahead and I formally put in rho equilibrium as e to the power of minus beta h and h is nothing but half 2 m a p a square plus 1 over 2 m b p b square divided by the partition function and you can go back and uh, revise the modules. Uh, partition function is nothing but uh, integral over uh, let me just write otherwise I get confused. Uh, dq dp integral over dq integral over dp e to the power of minus beta h. And I have an additional pr in the numerator. So, now you see that this separation of h in the language of pr is very useful because I do not know how to integrate this very directly. Uh, so, I transform to this uh, center of mass Hamiltonian dq I leave aside and remember what is dp? dp is nothing but integral over all momentums which is integral over dpa, integral over dpb. Yeah? So, I could have written here dpa integral over dpb, but you note that integral over dpa into integral of dpb is nothing but integral of dpcom into integral of dpr. So, this thing instead let me erase 
and I can write that as dpcom dpr okay. and the Hamiltonian as well I can write as P R square. All divided by the same thing, these are vectors, you understand that and here also I have uh, transformed to P C O M and P R, I write the same big Hamiltonian here. So, now that you what you notice that my integral here has neatly separated into center of mass component and the relative component. So, that is what helps us in simplifying. Uh, so, the last integral that I have written now I can simplify that as integral over dq divided by integral over dq. So, you can go back one slide and you will note that there is no q term at all in the integral multiplied by uh, the center of mass also will very nicely separate out and finally, we have the relative term So, I am just uh, simplifying what I had written in the last slide into different terms. So, this portion cancels, this portion cancels and I am left with I have forgotten 1 over mu, 1 over mu dpr beta pr square absolute value of PR divided by DPR PR square. But uh, do you recall this term at all? Have we calculated this before? Does it tells remember reminds you of anything? Uh, this is nothing but a relative speed. So, uh, remember if my uh, we looked at just the kinetic energy component before and for this we were trying to find the average speed and we defined the average speed as nothing but 1 over mass into average momentum and this was nothing but exactly the uh, quantity that was uh, written in the last slide uh, beta 1 over 2 m p dot p into absolute value of p divided by the partition function. This is how exactly we calculated this. So, if you do not remember go back a couple of modules this is module 6 and in that we had shown that uh, this is how you calculate average speed exactly and we showed that this average speed comes out to be root 8 kt over pi m. Okay. So, I am not going to re derive it you can just look back into your module 6. Uh, the only difference in our current Hamiltonian is that our Hamiltonian looks like this p r square divided by 2 mu. So, the only thing is my here my m gets replaced with mu. So, your u in short becomes 8 k t over pi mu that is your average thermal speed where mu again is the called the relative mass k of t was pi r a plus r b whole square I am sorry this is the rate uh, u into n a into n b and this becomes equal to pi r a plus r b whole square root 8 k t over pi mu n a n b. Where again 
mu is and just writing it again so that you have the final answer at one place. So, that is how you calculate a rate in kinetic theory of positions at least the first estimate we are going to refine upon it. So, uh, in summary for today's module uh, we have looked at how to calculate this u and we have identified this u as the average thermal speed of uh, the relative motion between A and B. So, we have calculated that formally by doing that uh, trans doing the center of mass transformation and in that basically my mathematics uh, simplifies a little bit and I can calculate this relative speed u and with that we I get the final answer as this rate equal to pi r a plus r b square into this average thermal speed into n into n b. So, in the next module uh, we are going to continue from this point we are going to calculate rate constant and discuss a few of its properties. Thank you.